two, three. It's not four. fine. Be fine. Denver! <laughs> One of their group of friends died, was murdered in college. She's so Why pretty. You know what I mean? It was like that back and forth, like, oh, did they do it? Did they do it? Did they do it? Really? Hi, welcome. This is, uh, I'm, um, uh, I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley. We're doing a read-along thing. I'm going to vlog reading this book over Thanksgiving vacation as me and my family travel to Amarillo, Texas. Here it is. There you go. Bye. Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Darling, you send me. Darling, you send me. <laughs> Tell her what you want. Say warm chocolate turtle cake. I want warm chocolate turtle cake. Impromptu reading vlog. We are in Amarillo in the hotel. I've started reading this today. I think we're just going to do a vlog just for this book. Very excited to read this. I am currently on page 53. I want to read this just because I need to know why the scissors. It's the age old mystery why the damn scissors. Beth brought this up from Beth's All Booked. Katie brought this up from Lit and Labs. And I need to know why is it called In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and there's a pair of scissors on the front and no one has told me yet. So let's figure it out, shall we? We're following a group of friends. Our main character is Jessica, and Jessica, I'm not gonna lie, is kind of annoying me right now. She's our main character, and it's this group of seven friends. They all went to college together. This is 10 years later. She graduated college in 2009, so technically she'd be exactly my age right now. Present day is 2019, I think. So she's 32. One of their group of friends died, was murdered in college. Now they're going back to their like 10 year reunion, meeting back up with all of this old group of friends and secrets are coming out. One of their friends was accused but not convicted. And so he's kind of like the outcast. Heather is the one that was killed. I don't know how she was killed yet. Her little brother went to school with them too. So he's involved somehow. Each of these friends has really intricately woven histories with each other. And like some of them were couples and now aren't. And they're now coupled with other people in this friend group. And their characters are all really interesting and really different. But Jessica is annoying the shit out of me. She grew up with this dad who just needed perfection. He's a Harvard graduate and he just pushed it on her constantly. And so she's always felt like she wasn't good enough. And so now she's like the first female executive or uh, partner or something like that in New York in some big company. I don't know what it is. She's doing really well, but she's going back to this reunion and she has this whole scheme in her mind of how she's going to impress everybody and how she's going to make everybody regret not noticing her before. Her insecurities are just really bothering me because she just, she's so afraid of being invisible. Some people want to be invisible, not Jessica. Anyway, so far I am intrigued, but I'm just like, like I said, a little perturbed by certain aspects of our protagonist's personality, but that doesn't say anything about the story. Like that's just, I, I, I'm still being drawn in. I'm still actually really enjoying this. Why the goddamn scissors though? Why the scissors? I don't understand. I'm chilling in my hotel room right now. Let's see if I can turn this around. I can't see anything. So I don't know if that's just glare. Let me show you. Ugh. This is Amarillo. This is where we are. Hadley ordered room service for the first time. She's being completely spoiled. She ordered room service. She's got her own room separate from ours. It's going to be a great holiday. It's going to be a great Thanksgiving weekend. We are going to hang out with family. Hopefully I'll get this book read and we'll just have some fun. <laughs> oh my God, why is it so
so bright. Down. I'm on page 123 of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. It's really good so far. I don't think I mentioned it's like multiple timelines. Let me get this lighting decent here. Whatever, it's fine. It's not fine. Be fine. Oh my god. We're going back and forth between when they were in college and 2019. And the way it's done is actually really brilliant. The college chapters, they are not sequential. They're not in order. They are just giving you the parts you need to know. So they'll go from like sophomore year, freshman year, and then back to like senior year, and then junior year. And senior year is when Heather was murdered. And so, but they're just giving you little bits that you need to know. And it seems like every time we go back to the college chapters, it gives you some kind of information that is going to help you with what you're learning in the current chapters that we go back to. The way it's crafted in general, really, really well done. I still don't like Jessica. I have my suspicions about her. I won't get into that because it's going to be spoiler free. Yeah, I don't like her at all. It's got a lot of stuff about like fraternities and sororities and a lot of competition going on there. Some of the stuff I feel like you have to have been in frat stuff to understand because they're like shortening the names of the frats. I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'm sure it stands for something else. I think my husband and kid are home. Back to the hotel anyway. But it's a lot of talk about like fraternities and sororities. Hi! Don't mind me, just talking to the camera. Anyway, really loving it so far. I'll check back in later. Are you done? Steph, you're doing great. <laughs> Good job. fit into that dress. She's Hadley sized. But She's just I'm hanging out protecting her guns. Wild. All right, we decided to straighten it for funsies. But oh my gosh, look how cute! And I got all my layers. It feels so light and fluffy. Bye. Excuse me, I'm being glamorous. I'm being glamorous. Move. Drop it. Yeah, drop it if you want me to throw it. Really, dog? Really? Come on. Oh! Where do I look? Where do I look? Okay. I have 60 pages left of this. I just finished all of my homework that I've been putting off all week. Now I'm going to get to it. I'm going to finish it. 60 pages. I will say, I don't think this is a spoiler to say, the murder weapon is a pair of scissors. Why then is it called In My Dreams I Hold a Knife? I still don't know. There are still, I have 60 pages left. There's no direct connection to the title. I don't know. It's like midnight right now. My goal is to try and finish this tonight and then close this out in the morning. But we'll see. I'm pretty tired. So I'll, I'll let y'all know. You'll know. You'll 
find out. Okay, goodbye. Okay, it's the next day. This is my new haircut curly. My bangs are quite short, but you know what? That's fine. They'll grow really fast. My hair feels a lot healthier and bouncy. This dog, he's just so crazy. All right, so anyway, I finished this last night so good. And I want to talk about it. Where to start? It makes sense that this book, though it has a 10 year span in timelines, is set in 2009 and 2019 because she cleverly did not want to have to deal with the whole personal fan pizza thing. I'm not monetized. I don't know why I'm worried about saying that. I say fuck in every video in my intro. <laughs> no, if I even do get monetized, I can't. Like, none of the videos I've ever made can be <laughs> monetized. I don't know why I worry about this. The fucking pandemic. So, yeah, I thought that was really smart of her. Denver! <laughs> get on the couch. Get, get. Go on. Either do that or sit down. Sit. You're always tip tapping. Yes, okay, I know. I love you too. Come on. Get up here. Thank you. Baby, over here. Oh, don't step on me. Step on me. Denver, you stay on that couch. Baby. You stay on that couch. Baby. Okay. Okay, what was I saying? Sometimes when authors set books in 2020 and beyond, if they don't mention it, then it's weird. If they do mention it, but they don't fully delve into the effects of it, then it's weird too. So it's just best to set it in 2019. Smart move on her part to just avoid the whole subject altogether. Because we want to read for escapism anyway. Okay, so I was talking about how Jessica really annoyed me in this. And I kept thinking about that as I was reading. And I was like, why does she annoy me so much? I think it's because, like, I have this theory that, like, this, like, mirrored theory that, like, every time someone annoys you, it's something about yourself that you see in them that you don't like about yourself. So I was like, what is it about myself that I relate to with her? And I think the, I think the connection is that when I was younger, I considered myself kind of a late bloomer. I really didn't know who I was for a long time. And I really wanted that popularity, like in high school. I wanted what the cheerleaders had, what the cool kids had. And I always felt like kind of an outcast, kind of an outsider. I listened to music I didn't actually like. I, you know, did stuff that was cool just because it was cool. And I've always regretted that. I've always wished that I had come to know myself earlier in life. Because I think when that actually happened was when I went to college, when I realized like none of that matters. Like the things that, set you apart from other people that's what is special about about you that's what you bring to this world and that's what what makes you an individual and so it took me a really really long time to identify that to come to terms with that and i think i was feeling that frustration through jessica because she very much is living this life of trying to be what other people think she should be she's desperate to be the best she is she's got a lot of trauma from her parents and a lot of that comes from her dad being a Harvard grad, talking about that, and then kind of not fulfilling his own dreams and pushing that upon her. That brings us to the kind of gray morality of a lot of these characters. In fact, I think of like every single one of these characters is morally gray. So if you like reading a lot about morally gray characters, I would definitely suggest this book to you. And there's a lot of talk about this idea of the part of you that is in the sunshine, the part of you that you show to the world, and then your kind of shadow life. Your shadow life is what you think and the things that are below the surface that you don't want to show to other people that you are afraid to let out. And that is the cause of a lot of the conflict in this book. And it's just done so well because each one of these characters, their motives for everything that's happening within this friend group is just so well explained and I feel like this is unarguably and objectively just a really great book. I don't think anyone, I haven't seen any bad reviews for this and I can't imagine there being one because it's well written, it's well set up, the characters are all lovable but at the same time hateable and everything they do makes sense. It's just this perfect storm of all of these emotions and feelings that you go through when you're coming of age when you're you know a new new adult so to speak this kind of reminded me of john mars in a way where it's like each chapter even though john mars doesn't necessarily do the, the dual timeline each chapter leaves off on kind of a cliffhanger so then you have to read the next timeline to get back to that other chapter with that cliffhanger so you're kind of like really 
enthralled in it. It's very fast paced. It just goes super quickly. And then they have all of the like fraternity sorority stuff, which I didn't particularly love, but I get it. And it kind of adds to the weight of everything that's going on. It adds to the extreme emotions because of all the competition and the sort of want to be the best and the striving that happens within this book. And it's just so twisty. The red herrings had me every time. I didn't know if I was figuring something out or if this is what I was supposed to be thinking I was figuring out. You know what I mean? It was like that back and forth, like, oh, did they do it? Did they do it? Did they do it? And until you get to the very end, there's this massive reveal and then another reveal after that. That part kind of got my like heart racing, pounding a little bit. And then we come to the final Actually, let me go through spoilers first. I do want to talk a little bit about spoilers. So I'm going to put up a pair of scissors right here. And when that's gone, if you don't want to be spoiled, this is your warning right now. I will leave that up while I'm talking about spoilers and I'll take it down as soon as I'm done talking about spoilers. So when you see that go, if you don't want to hear about the spoilers, go ahead and fast forward to that part. Okay, so let's get into the spoilers. Throughout this book, everything made sense to me except for the fact that Coop was in love with Jessica. I was like, why does he love her? She's so fake and she's just like desperate and like I didn't get it. And then I finally understood that he saw past that, that she was more than that but she's constantly battling who she really is against who she thinks she should be. And he's the only one that saw through that. And so actually I think it's really beautiful that he loves her. Even though she tried so hard to hide who she actually is, he's the only one that can actually see that in her. And then I do want to talk about the twists. So Mint. Mint is the one who actually killed Heather. I absolutely believe his motivations for doing that. And when that reveal happened, I was like, okay, but they're still like, like what, 40 pages left, 50 pages left? Like, what are we doing here? What's next? Then Jessica started talking about how there was more that she didn't admit to and coming to find out Heather was still alive, Jessica ran across her, and then we get into this whole spiel, not spiel, but this idea of when you don't do something, it can be just as wrong as when you do something wrong. And so I really, really loved that because she did the same thing when she was competing for a salutatorian with her other classmate and she saw her drop the page of the test on the ground. She's like, I could say something, but it really helps my chances if I, if I just don't, if I just leave it at that. And she didn't, she became salutatorian. It worked in her favor, but what are the consequences of that? And is that okay? No, I don't think so. She should have said something. And of course, when it comes to Heather being still alive, she got thinking how good it would be for her if Heather actually had died. And so she just let her die. And that's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. So, and then that got me to the point where I'm like, I don't even root for her and Coop anymore. Cause the whole time I'm rooting for her and Coop. Well, shit. Should I even be rooting for her? Like, do I even want her to be happy? She is very much on the darker side of morally gray. And that's what I love so much about this book is that it's really exploring those gray areas. And I love that when, when an author can do that because nothing is black and white. We're all just animals navigating the gray. And so this really, really does a great job of showcasing that. And I appreciate that so much. Oh, also... Caro. I thought for sure for a long time that Caro was the killer. Well, first I thought it was Jessica, obviously. Then I thought it was Caro. And I was like, this, this girl's unhinged. Like, she has stalker tendencies. She is way too involved in her friends' lives, way too invested in keeping them all together for no reason. So I really actually liked the fact that it wasn't Caro because Caro's really the victim in this story. Aside from Heather, Caro kind of got shafted. Like, she was there for everyone every time they needed her. And they didn't care about her enough to keep her involved in their lives. Then she got screwed over by Coop in the end. Oh man, just so well done. That's all I'm gonna talk about for spoilers. So I just had to get it out there. If you wanna respond to this, then put a spoiler bar and then, you know, dock it down a few notches and talk to me about that in the, in the comments because <laughs> so good. Okay, so let's talk about, mm. Let's talk about the title of this book. We have a pair of scissors. It is the mystery of all mysteries. And why is it called In My Dreams I Hold a Knife? And that, I cannot tell you. <laughs> and this is why no one's told me. Because it is kind of a spoiler to reveal this. I will say it's not 
explicitly pointed out or mentioned as to like a direct reference. Like there sometimes is in books where it's like, this is the title and this is why. It's not that. But once you get to the second big twist at the very end, it kind of makes sense. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't want to even like push you to think too hard into it because it's in spoilery territory. It's definitely woven in in a way that makes sense. There is a reason, but also at the same time, not. Like it could have been in my dreams, I hold scissors, but that's just not as good of a title, is it? But it does make sense. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Mystery solved as far as I'm concerned. I know I probably didn't give you too much there, but read the book and you'll find out for yourself because it's so freaking good. I'm giving this five stars. Thank you guys for hanging out with me along with me and my family on Thanksgiving vacation. I had so much fun reading this. I'm so glad I picked this up and I highly recommend it. This is gonna be probably on my favorites of the year list. I love this book. I will probably pick up anything from this author. Thought it was just really, really well done. I was fully immersed. I read this all with my eyes, which I never do. I always read with my ears. And so, yeah, that's just a sign that it was really good writing. So yeah, there's that. I appreciate you guys so much. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my other social means. I'm trying to learn TikTok. It's a weird thing. I feel like there's a lot of, a lot more buttons than there are on Instagram. So, you know, just bear with me on that. Yeah, it's been a blast. You'll probably be seeing my November wrap up next, which I'm pro I may film today as well. I'm not sure. It's the 28th, so I really need to get to it. I do want to ask if anybody has any Christmas thriller recommendations. I'm looking for like a diehard type situation. Christmas in it, but not necessarily revolving around Christmas, but also like thrillery fast paced. So if anyone knows many books like that, send it my way, please. Thanks for watching. Don't forget life is short. So read Riley, cheers and goodbye. <laughs>